Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Zaki Mas'ud. I will look at the next subtopic which is Secure Socket Layer SSL Part 2B in this session. So let's get started and enjoy your learning. The next application of SSL is what we call as the SSH, which is stand for a secure shell. SSH or a secure shell is initially designed to replace insecure RSH or alternate utilities. It is used to securely uh, connecting remotely by the administration, mostly of the Unix system. And then it's extended to support a secure file transfer and also an email. SSH provides security at the application layer. It's only cover the traffic explicitly protected and is built on top of the TCP reliable transport layer protocol. The next application of SSL is the SET or a set secure electronic transaction. SET is an open encryption and a security specification designed to protect credit card transaction on the internet. It uses SSL to secure the communication link. Its main requirement is to provide confidentiality of payment and ordering information and to make sure the integrity of all the transmitted data. It's also to help to authenticate of the card holder. Okay, the next part which is the part 3, I'm going to discuss to you with the HTTPS or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. HTTPS is coming from the word HTTP, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Hypertext Transfer Protocol is a document that are not interpreted by the HTTP. It's a stateless protocol, which is a request are uh, independent. It's server respond with documents. A client request document for script through the URL. So what is HTTPS? HTTPS stands for Secure Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTPS is a communication protocol designed to transfer encrypted information between the computers over the World Wide Web, or WWW. Essentially, an implementation of HTTPS used to enable the online purchasing or the exchange of private information and resources over the insecure networks. So why we need to combine HTTPS with SSL and how we actually do it? HTTPS with SSL is to enable a secure communication between a client and also a server. And how HTTPS combine with this SSL? Firstly, client is going to request a secure transaction and inform the encryption algorithm and key size that it support by accessing a URL with the HTTPS. Next, the server send the requested server certificates, which is an encrypted server public key and a list of supported ciphers and key size in order of priority. The client then generate a new secret symmetric session key based on the priority list sent by the server. A client compare the certificate issued by the CA and confirm that certificate is belong to the server intended for the communication. Then after that, if valid and a certificate confirmed, client is going to increase a copy of the new session that the key is generated with the server public key obtained from the certificates. Then the client sends the new encrypted key to the server. Once the server decrypt the new encryption key with its private key, and upon its completion, both client and the server has the same secret session key and used to secure communication and data transport.
Okay, after the HTTPS, now we're going to explore how to secure a file transfer protocol or the FTP. The file transfer protocol make it possible for the user to transfer file from one computer or host on the internet to another. A user of an FTP program must log in both hosts in order to transfer a file from one to the other. In the FTP security, what is going to happen is first it's login authorization, which the basic FTP protocol does not have a concept of authentication, and also the data channel encapsulation, where in the, in the normal FTP the data transfer is directly visible if you look captured the network. If we secure it using the SFTP, then the secure FTP is going to have several strengths. One is the FTP protocol run, runs on a secure channel. All the traffic are encrypted, including the password. It provides a variety of authentication method, and it can be automated by public and also a private key authentication. Nevertheless, secure FTP have its own weaknesses. One is the FTP protocol is designed to provide primary file transfer, but it can also provide general file system access on the remote server in, in a secure manner. And it can also be intentionally misused, which the network admin will not be able to monitor the network because it has been encrypted. Well guys, we are at the last slide of this session. Hope this sharing session has given you some new knowledge and input. If you want to know more about this topic, don't hesitate to contact me at the email below. See you next time. Assalamualaikum and a very good day.